Welcome everybody to this uh, webinar online event. Um, my name is David Runge, co-founder of the Future Schools Alliance. Um, and today's topic is all about online and remote learning. And we're super looking forward to this. Um, we've got a great group of people here to talk through some of their experiences with regard to having moved online. Um, a quick background, the Future Schools Alliance, we're a group of educators and schools who are committed to educational transformation and shaping the future of learning. Um, we attempt really strongly to amplify the voice of educational leaders across Australia and New Zealand, um, particularly leaders who are interested in transformation and innovation. Kate's area of investigation today is translating a vision of play-based and project-based learning through a remote model of educational delivery. So at this point, I'll hand over to Kate to present her thinking. Thanks. All right. So. Um as David sort of already introduced, uh, we are in the ACT and it's a primary school, P to six. Uh, we only opened in 2019 and so we, the building design is quite innovative and we have multi-age, multi-stage learning neighbourhoods where children learn in either preschool, K to two or three to six. Um, they have a, a home learning coach who works predominantly with the child around social, emotional and family connection. But aside from that, the kids are learning through project-based learning, play-based learning, and moving in and out of a variety of spaces across their specific learning neighbourhood over the course of the day. Um, for us, there's a significant focus on personalisation of learning and children all having um, voice and choice in what they're doing day to day, I guess. And we see our teachers more as learning coaches so that they're working alongside and delivering feedback through either individual conferences or workshop model um, and that there's a mixture of offline, online, collaborative play, but I guess we're inherently playful, and that means hands-on play, project-based learning, all of that. So I think um, for us, some of the challenges that we faced initially or thought about in establishing what online learning, not online, I hate online learning because that's not what it's going to be for us, um, but establishing what remote learning was going to look like at Margaret Hendry School for our children was a about going back to the vision for learning for us and that's four pillars which is grow collaborate connect and love so it's really about how do we channel the vision and philosophy for education through the systems that we establish and what we set up um, I think there was a real danger of people stepping back into a more archaic and uh, I guess didactic way of teaching and losing that interdisciplinary focus that we have at Margaret Hendry and I did hear whisperings of I'll just take back my whole home learning coach group and I'll just teach to them and we'll shut down the inquiry hub and we'll shut down workshop, et cetera. It'll be easier for us to all manage in that way. So that was a challenge, thinking that people were going to be frightened and step back into old ways of being and doing. Um, and I guess, yeah, leave that inter interdisciplinary approach. And I think also immediately everyone was trying to deliver content and links and all of those sorts of things. So we had to think, how are we retaining inquiry as the driver and sticking true to our model for education and what that looks like. And for us, it is around having a specific Google Classroom for each of the learning neighbourhoods. So um, we're just being quite simplistic in the architecture of these classrooms so that the home page is easy to navigate for families and easy to navigate for children from preschool right through to year six. So, each child only actually has two classrooms that they view and those classrooms um, one of them is a community hive and that is a generic classroom for the entire school and it has um, lots of things that people from lsa's through sorry like, like teacher assistants through to community members staff members um, administrative support all of those people have put together learning opportunities brain breaks um, different things that you can do with your families and connect and different inquiries out into nature um, that don't necessarily link in with a particular inquiry that we're doing at the school or a particular project. It's just a community and a way of connecting community and making sure that everyone can see inside each other's homes and how they work and how things belong. Um, outside of that, they've got a home learning coach group page and that page is where they check in with their peers each day. And I think the main focus for us is how we ensure that all the interactions that we have with our children are really purposeful because we acknowledge that uh, families aren't going to be able to set children up for a nine o'clock check-in that goes for an hour and then set their three children up and plus do their own work. So for us, it is about how do we keep that quite simplistic? How do we ensure that they've got 
a set expectation for what they will complete over the course of the week, but remain true to that choice and pace and individual motivation that guides their learning. So Community Hive, all about interest-based learning, Home Learning Coach Group is around that cell stuff and the connection and keeping connected to family. So they do have that one source of someone to go and speak with. Uh, and then we've got the um, Learning Hub. And the Learning Hub is where we maintain those inquiry and provocations that our children are so used to engaging with on a day-to-day -day basis. And there will be an element of flip teaching where staff are introducing a, a provocation and then the considerations around what's the multiple entry and exit points for children because we know that um, you know we've got K to two and three to six so it is quite personalized where they access that material that provocation that learning inquiry project-based learning and then that exit point as well so we don't want worksheets we don't want simple check checklists it's how are you reflecting on that learning how are you recording what you have done and thinking about the process rather than the product or just a simple checklist. So that is available to them in the Learning Hub. All of our teachers and administrative staff are retaining their connection to their professional learning communities and the collaborative learning. And we see a real opportunity around decreasing workload and getting back to how do we work together as collaborative professionals and some of the protocols around communication and working collaboratively for learning design. So. The, I guess the key things that I've spoken about and then where we're headed to, key things is impact and purposeful interactions with children and not doing a home learning coach check-in with 40 kids on a page just for the sake of it. Um, having simplicity and accessibility of access to the online platforms that parents and preschool age children can navigate. And then ensuring that our pedagogy and practice and vision for learning is replicated in the way that we're teaching. So there is no worksheets we're certainly you know encouraging people to be outside collaborating with others doing all those sorts of things that we want to see and being inherently playful and curious and collaborative and we're really looking forward to hearing from everyone else today is around how we connecting children for that authentic collaboration and then how we providing meaningful timely and targeted feedback for children but also for staff on their practice and that coaching and mentoring so we just had to keep bringing everyone back to the vision like that's wonderful but let's go back to our vision our vision is for project-based learning and play-based learning we cannot start to step back and that's such a danger that we would all of a sudden step back into that way of thinking so once they worked through that and they reconnected with the vision I'd say the majority of staff got excited and got on board with it and saw the opportunity that this presents for not only now but when we come back to school Lots of the things we've been trying to do over the course of the year and a bit that we've been open, we've been backpedalling because we only had 10 weeks prior to opening where I was appointed really. So there was so much work to be done in the course of the first year. So now they're just seeing how much we can get done over the course of this term when we're sharing the workload and working together collaboratively. And also um, we have a lot of beginning teachers as well. So how we can coach and mentor and, and support them during this time. We think it's just amazing.